weighs 11 pounds. Yeah. She was featured on a ABC News special back in August. She has a rare genetic disorder that slows down the aging process. There was also a feature of a 29-year-old who has the body of a 10-year-old and a 31-year-old who has the body of a 2-year-old. As you can imagine, researchers are wanting to find out what is it genetically that's slowing down the aging process because there are certainly big markets in the United States if we could slow down on the aging process. Kind of like oil of a spread on jeans. It'll help you with look younger too. Eternal life. So many people want to live forever. Have you heard of Dimitri Iskov? He is a 32-year-old multi-millionaire and his 2045 initiative. You see, in the year 2045, this call will be 60 years old, and he hopes by then to have developed a robot into which he can download his own thoughts, his memories, even his personality quirks. And he feels like through that that he could live, even after his physical body is gone, dead, he could live for hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years. Here on this earth. On the lighter side, have you heard of the clothing store called Forever 21? Forever 21 is a clothing store that is geared towards young people in their 20s. In an interview on CNN.com, the owner, Go on Chain, said that the inspiration for this store came from the fact that his clientele are in their 20s. And he says so many people want to be 21. They want to stay 21 forever. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be 21 again. Life for me started at 23 when I met Rachel, so I don't want to be 21 again. And I certainly don't want to be on this earth forever. But eternal life, that's what people are grasping after, but they don't know how to obtain it. They don't know, they don't realize that sin is what keeps us from enjoying eternal life. Not the clothes that you wear, not the jeans that you have. If you were to ask the average American walking on the streets of Paris, Kentucky, do you need a Savior? They would say no. Because the average American cannot fathom that they have done, ever done anything that would warrant spending eternity in a lake of fire. Oh, they may have done some bad things now and again. But something that would merit eternal life in, in a lake of fire, no. comes 
from the Latin, trans, which means beyond, and gradior, which means to pass. So great transgression means to pass beyond, to go beyond God's law. So do I need a Savior? Well, that brings us to answer the question, to ask the question, is sin real? If sin is real, then I need a Savior. If sin is not real, if it's just a figment of my imagination, no, I'm still going to need a Savior. Is sin real? How about asking the show tonight, or Angelina de Jesus, or Amanda Berry, if sin is real? Those were the three women that were kidnapped by Ariel Castro and for 10 years had to give in to his self-gratification. He was indicted on 937 counts of criminal misconduct, including kidnapping and rape and emotional and psychological abuse. Ask these women is sin real. Or how about asking the 1,429 people or their families, including 426 children, who died back in August in the nation of Syria because President Bashar al-Assad gassed them. Ask them if sin is real. Sarah, the eggs, mustard gas, blisters on your skin, respiratory problems, internal bleeding, and death. Secretary of State John Kerry called it a moral of sin. Indeed it is, but what about the 100,000 people that President al-Assad has killed with conventional weapons? Guns and grenades and IEDs. Is that not also a moral of sin? You see, that's the problem that mankind runs into when we don't let the Bible define what is moral. If you ask the international community, if you ask the average person in America, what is right, what is wrong, what is moral, what is immoral, most of them come around something close to the idea that society determines what is wrong. Well, that would be okay until it runs counter to what the people in power believe. For example, in the state of California, California has voted four times to define marriage between a man and a woman. Four times. Voted. The majority. But then it went to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and eventually the Supreme Court and a few individuals said the majority are wrong. So you see, it's not the majority that can decide what is right and what is wrong, what is moral and what is immoral. Because sometimes the majority get it right but they're not in agreement with the people who are in power. Is sin real? How about asking J.P. Nordine or John Owen or Celeste Porter or any of the other 13 people who had their legs blown off in the Boston Marathon Hall back in April? Is sin real? Why is it that Ariel Castro did something that was wrong? Why is it that Bashar al-Assad is guilty of moral wrong, of moral obscenity? Why is it? On what basis can we say that the Samaria brothers did something that was morally wrong? Why? This man named Sam had an ongoing dispute with his neighbor over property boundaries. And eventually he got so mad at his neighbor that he took his gun and he hid behind a tree. And when his neighbor came home from work, he shot him and killed him dead. He didn't intend to kill him. He just wanted to scare him and shot him and killed him dead. Nobody ever knew about it. Nobody ever suspected Sam. But Sam felt bad about what he had done. And so he did everything he could for the widow. He established a ten thousand dollar scholarship for his widow's daughter. And he did other works in the community, trying to make up for what he knew was 
died, he had cancer, and he went and talked to a lawyer, and he talked to a preacher. And the lawyer told him to go tell the sheriff what he had done, and the preacher said, go talk to the widow and confess to her what you've done. And he did both. And he was able to find forgiveness from God. And he was able to die in peace. Law was what Sam did wrong. Is sin real? Well, that makes us ask the question, who defines what is sin? Who is it that has the right to say what is sin? If it is true that we can do whatever we want to do, and that's what our media tells us, that's what our, our cultural elites, our leaders in our country tell us, you can do whatever it is you want to do. Why can't we do whatever we want to do? Some friends of ours years ago, their son left home and went to college, University of Tennessee. He took a comparative religions class where they studied Christianity and Islam and Judaism and Buddhism and Hinduism and every other Islam that man has come up with. I was the associate minister, the youth minister of the congregation where he went. He never came and asked me about what he was hearing in class. He never went to his mom and dad and asked them about what he was hearing in class. But then one day he came home and told his mom and dad what every Christian parent dreads to hear. I don't believe in God anymore. I don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. I don't believe He's the Savior. And his parents asked me to sit down and talk to him, and I did. And atheism has no moral basis. I said, Bo, if I broke into your house and I raped your mom and your sister, would that be morally wrong? And he said, yes. I said, why? Because you're violating their rights. I said, if there is no God, why do I care about their rights? Man has no right if there is no God. Who is it that defines what is sin? Why is it wrong to mistreat your brother? Because the Bible says, James chapter 3 and verse 9, in the context of how we use our tongue, James says the tongue is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Father and, and Lord in heaven, and with it we curse man who was made after the image of God. See why it's wrong to mistreat our fellow man? Because James the Lord's brother said our fellow man is made the image of God. You cannot talk about sin without talking about God. Sin. Homartia. It means missing the mark. And if you're missing the mark, it implies that there is a standard. A standard to which God expects us to live up to. What is the second greatest commandment? The lawyer asked Jesus on that one occasion, Matthew chapter 22. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Who defines what sin is? Jesus says, if you don't love your neighbor as yourself, you're guilty of sin. Have you ever done that? And in this situation, in this context, neighbor is broader than just the person next door. You ever treat your wife? Or your husband less than that? Do you ever treat your children or your parents less than what God expects? Love your neighbor as yourself. Do you ever fail to live up to God's expectations? 